All right, hey everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It's so good to see you. Before we get started today, please, please, please like, subscribe, follow, and share because I'm about to give you that good good. I'm about to be the plug as I desire to be. Father God, help me. Okay, so we are back and we are talking about the medical school application. Whew, it's a beast. It's a beast. And I'm not going to lie. I'm happy I'm not doing it right now. But I'm going to give you all everything that I know that I've used to get through it because I had to do it twice. Okay. I have my dream parents and they definitely made me apply before I was ready. But when I was ready, I was ready. So um been through it twice. I went ahead and like went and looked through the double um, AMC website and was able to see what the new process is and things like that because the pandemic did affect some of the timeline components, but it's, it's not much different than when I than when I applied back in 2016. So I just want to be here. I want to be the plug for y'all. I know that this is a time of uncertainty and just worry. I know a lot of people have pushed back their timeline when they expected to apply this year, but because MCAT got pushed back and all of these other things that now they just folks don't feel comfortable applying and I and I am so sorry that you all have to go through this it is not an easy time as a med student it's not as easy time to be a human okay so I'm just here to be the plug and to help in any way that I can as so many people helped me so I hope that this series yes it's a series y'all if y'all know now I love me a good series so it's a series I hope this series helps y'all we're going to start off today talking about the application checklist, like the main components of the application that you want to get done the moment it opens up, okay? The next part of this series is going to hit on the personal statement, then we're going to talk about the 15 experience, experiences. <laughs> we're going to talk about... <laughs> Sorry, I'm such a weirdo. We're going to talk about the letters of recommendation or letters of evaluation, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we're going to talk about selecting medical schools and then we're going to talk about the wait. Because I promise you, for me, honestly, the wait was probably harder than filling out the freaking application in the first place. But we're going to talk about the wait and working on secondaries and how you can move on from there. Okay? All right, so we're just going to get to it. I don't want to keep I don't want these videos to be too long. Um but yeah, when I was applying to medical school, I think Honestly, the hardest part of the application to me was just filling it in. And I think uh, I'm going to touch on the reason why at the end. But the main things that you need to do with that application, right, is that when it opens up, it normally opens up July 1st, I mean, sorry, June 1st. Um, and I believe the timeline is still the same. The main thing that's changed is that now um, the AAMC is not sending out your application until July 10th to schools. I would double check like week not weekly but check pretty often with the website because they're constantly updating the facts the frequently asked questions they have put up a guide they have a covid section where they update as well and give you guys up-to-date information so i will make sure to link it down below in my description box but please 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 like try to stay abreast of what they're doing and how the process is changing but just know that everyone has been hit by this pandemic I think sometimes it's really easy for us to kind of just focus on how things are impacting us, but everybody has been hit by this pandemic. That includes the medical schools, the people that will be reviewing your application, the AAMC themselves, everybody that's applying across the nation and the world have all been hit. So you are not alone in this struggle, okay? But main things, they want your identifying information. They want the schools you attended. One thing that I didn't know when I hit the schools attended part was that they're looking for the schools I might have taken like 10, 15 years ago, right? So when I was in high school, I would take classes at this junior college down the street from my house, okay? So they wanted all the transcripts from that too. And one of the things that I would advise you, I know this is coming out when it's coming out, but try to get your transcripts as early as possible. Like low-key, the year that you know you're applying, get your transcripts from all your past schools Especially if you're not currently in school, you can get everything. Nothing's about to change on those transcripts. So get them and keep them, okay? One, because you always want to have a copy for yourself so that you can go through and check and make sure that it is actually accurate. I actually, right now, as in med school, I was sending out my transcripts to, um, to different schools that I wanted to do, or not schools at this point, residency programs. 
that I wanted to do away rotations at and they had stuff wrong on my transcript. And if I hadn't ordered one for myself, I would have never known, okay? So I would highly advise, I definitely did this in undergrad, to make sure, not even in undergrad, this was like post back and post post back. but I would highly advise that you order a transcript, whether it's unofficial so that it's free because we want to save the coins, but order a transcript for yourself and order an official one for the double, the, um, for your AMCAS application so that it can be properly verified. Number one, those are going to take longer just because most things are closed down so you can't do those things in person. So try to do it as early as possible. Even when the pandemic is over, order your transcripts early. Uh, everything, uh, everything. That's important. Um, Two, so that's for the schools attended piece. Even when I went, I did a study abroad program um, at, in the UK, I had to list that school, but because it was properly um, accounted for, the grades were accounted for on my university transcript, I didn't have to get that transcript as well. So that's another thing. You will probably have to list that as a school, but it's in your other, if it's in your undergrad transcript, you're good. You also have to make sure that you put your biographic information, which is super important too. That tends to include a space for you to um, talk about your disadvantaged status if you do feel like you have been disadvantaged in your attainment of education. And so when I was applying, I did not necessarily feel like I had been disadvantaged. I had to have this discussion with a mentor um, and kind of share my upbringing for her to tell me, oh, yes, honey, <laughs> you're def definitely disadvantaged, even though you might not have felt that way because you just dealt with the cards that you were given, you know, you, 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 you have risen above your circumstances and you're still here today, but you are disadvantaged. And there's a way that you can still share that story, right? Without putting it in this, you're not trying to tell a pity party, right? I think with everything, your story should always be full circle. And if you find it helpful, I can go ahead and do a whole nother video on disadvantage statements. Just comment below. And I even have my old one somewhere and I can read it out to you all um, and just kind of talk about, and give you some just tips on how to further develop that. But I would say the best um, method to writing that is to talk to someone who knows you and knows your story and kind of share your upbringing and see whether or not that is... I guess enough to be to to feel enough for you to write that actual statement. Okay, so that that goes to whether you your uh, your elementary school or your middle school or whatever was in an, as well as in it was in an educationally under resourced area or a medically underserved area, things of that nature, or whether you were sick growing up. There are so many different ways that you can have a disadvantage in in getting a solid foundation in education to pursue something like medical school so definitely think about it if it fits you it's a very personal thing if it fits you share your story but share at the end the resilience and how you're here today that's not that's that on that so outside of that you're gonna have to put your background info your coursework all of um the standardized tests um of course you're gonna have to hit your personal statement and all those things but we're gonna talk about that next um, I think for me, the hardest thing in terms of just the basic information that I had to put on my application was truly my transcript. I think that was the very last thing that I put in the first time. And by the second time I applied, I had kind of like tried to address it and remind and, and tell myself, I am not my grades. My grades do not equate to my worth. My grades do not equate to my calling to be a physician. My grades do not touch my ability to be a good physician. These are all important things that you need to realize, okay? You can be the top scorer in all your classes and suck as a doctor. You can have horrible patient interaction skills and no one comes to you and then you're, you're ineffective. So I had to really tell myself, you know, like my grades do not mean that I am inadequate because I had a couple blips. So it definitely took me a while to disassociate myself from my grades. And so because of that, that was like the part that I dreaded of the application. So I will tell you right now, turn the page, input your grades as quickly as you can and as correctly as you can. You don't want to make a mistake because it's like so many classes that you took throughout undergrad to get here, right? So make sure you put those in and then turn the page. And even like just a story about that as we close is that on one of my, in one of my interviews, actually, they asked me, 
Um, you know, like your story is is beautiful. Like you really, it really came across in your application. But something that they're gonna ask when we have our when we meet and have our admissions committee meeting is, but what about her grades? You know, they were their your post back grades are like solid. But what happened before that? And I have no clue where this where this answer came from. I really don't know. But um, I. She was like, you know, your grades went up and then they went down and they would go up again and they would go, go down. So there wasn't really an upward trend until all of a sudden, boom, you're in post back and you're killing it. Like all days, like on hard classes, like what, what happened? And I was like, you know what? It would take me a long time to just share the intricacies behind my undergraduate experience because it was, it was, it was a lot. And to just explain like the environment that I was in. But I would say that I have proved that I can handle the rigors of medical school. You can see it in the in the post back, right? And the most important thing is for you to turn the page because my story is a page turner and there's more to it than that. And she was like, oh, that's, oh, that's great. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> and she wrote it down um, and I ended up getting into that school. And so I think, <sighs> turn the page for yourself. If you're someone that was like me that didn't have the best undergraduate GPA, had to do a post back and whatnot, um, don't worry about it, sweetheart. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. You're going to be okay. So I hope this first initial video on the checklist was helpful for you and encouraging for you. I'm trying to be the plug. Tune in to next time because we're going to be talking about the personal statement, how to tell your story. It's going to be nice and short and quick because that's how I like it. All right. Thanks, y'all. Thank you all for tuning in. Please, again, like, subscribe, share, and comment below with questions. And just let me know what you need. Let me know what you need. Here to be the plug. Bye, y'all. See you next time.